We looked at CDC recommendations for HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis as well as CDC's recommendation for post-exposure prophylaxis. Now, given an HIV patient case, evaluate and manage common drug-drug interactions. So when it comes to the pharmacokinetic boosters, we have cobicistat and ritonavir. Cobicistat is actually not an HIV drug, so it has no activity against HIV. Ritonavir itself is a protease in HIV protease inhibitor. However, uh, we actually don't use it for its protease uh, inhibition because we use a lower dose. It's such a potent inhibitor of these enzymes that we actually use it at suboptimal doses. So the doses, uh, you know, 100 milligram of ritonavir is not enough to be active against HIV, but 100 milligram is such a potent uh, um, in inhibitor of these enzymes that, uh, you know, we actually use it to boost uh, the concentrations of other protease, well, protease inhibitors. So you can see there are some differences between the two. Uh, one thing in particular about uh, cobicistat is that it can actually artificially cre uh, increase serum creatinine, and that's because it, uh, it actually inhibits some of the uh, secretion of uh, serum creatinine. So it really does nothing to the GFR. So, you know, obviously integrase uh, strand transfer inhibitors are primarily the first line agents that we use for treatment of HIV. So currently we have four on the market, raltegravir, dalutegravir, elvitegravir, and bigtegravir. Uh, elvitegravir is the, only one, is the only one that needs to be taken with food. They're pretty much all taken daily. Up until recently, raltegravir had to be taken twice a day, but now uh, there's a new higher dose of it that you can actually take once a day. Uh, in particular, elvitegravir and bigtegravir are actually substrates of 3A4. So, uh, elvitegravir itself actually needs to be boosted. So, cobicista will inhibit CYP3A4, so as a result, you will need less of elvitegravir. So, the pills will be smaller, and also with the half-life that's, uh, you know, a little shorter, 13 hours, uh, you can still dose l vitegravir once a day because of that pharmacokinetic booster. Now, bigtegravir, although it is a substrate of 3A4, it does not need uh, boosting. So, you know, you need smaller doses of bigtegravir, so 50 milligrams, so also the pill is uh, smaller than l vitegravir, so that's another reason that uh, boosting was not needed for bigtegravir, because for 50 milligrams, the pill was small enough, whereas l vitegravir, even with a booster, you, you still need 150 milligrams. So if you didn't have that booster, you would probably need uh, several times 150 milligrams. So when it comes to drug interactions, elvitegravir will have the most, not because of elvitegravir itself, but because it has to come with cobicistat. So cobicistat will cause a lot of drug interactions, whereas the rest of them don't have a pharmacokinetic uh, booster. One thing that big tegravir and dalutegravir have in common is that they both inhibit OCT2, OCD2. And one thing that's important is metformin is actually a substrate of OCT2. So OCT2 is a, you know, it's actually the, uh, its function is to actually secrete uh, metformin. So because they inhibit, uh, you will see uh, metformin levels increased. So that would be a uh, significant drug inter interaction because you will see a lot of diabetic patients on metformin. Bigtegravir also inhibits uh, MATE1. So let's uh, look at some clinically significant uh, drug interaction. So all integrated strand transfer inhibitors will interact with uh, cations like uh, and antacids. So any uh, polyvalent cation containing like uh, aluminum or uh, calcium, uh, they will actually bind to integrase inhibitors and will prevent their absorption. So for that reason, anything that contains a polyvalent cation should be avoided uh, or, or actually should be spaced out by two hours. So two hours before or after uh, you give uh, integrase uh, strand transfer inhibitors. So all of them, all four of them will interact with antacids, or not just antacids, anything that has, so if you were giving calcium pills or, you know, anything that has a polyvalent cation. 
Uh, one thing that uh, Big Tegravir and Dalu Tegravir have in common is that they both uh, will interact with Metformin and Dufetolite. So, uh, so when he says avoid, when I say avoid, I actually mean contraindicated. So, Dufetolite is actually contraindicated with uh, Big Tegravir and Dalu Tegravir. Uh, metformin is not a contraindication, so you just adjust the dose. Now, there's a really good chance that cobicistat may also interact with dofetolite. However, it's not in the package insert at the at the time at the moment, so they may just not have studied it. But be be careful with cobicistat and dofetolite. I didn't see it in the package insert, but I suspect cobicistat will also interact with dofetolite. Uh, Bictegravir is also contraindicated with uh, rifampin because rifampin is a strong inducer of CYP3A4 and Bictegravir is a substrate, so rifampin should be avoided. With Elvitegravir, it's uh, recommended to avoid uh, anything that's a substrate of CYP3A4, like uh, uh, these uh, statins are actually substrates of CYP3A4, and because cobicistat is a strong inhibitor, it's, it's actually contraindicated to use these two. It is okay to use atorvastatin. Uh, the same goes with uh, salmuterol. And then rifampin, of course, is a strong inducer of cyp 3 4 That actually, because you actually need a pharmacokinetic booster for vitegravir, so cobicisa is a strong inhibitor of cyp 3 4 and rifampin is a strong inducer, so you, you should... Uh, it's actually contraindicated to use rifampin because it will mess up elvitegravir um, levels. The same with some of the uh, anticonvulsants like phenytoin. They're also inducers, so pretty much most inducers of cyp 3 4 should not be used with elvitegravir because it needs help from a pharmacokinetic booster. And then, of course, because of cobicistat, uh, sh patients uh, sh use uh, caution with hormonal contraceptives because cobicistat can inhibit and uh, cause uh, failure of uh, hormonal contraceptives. Uh, when it comes to protease inhibitor, of course, uh, these are the three most common protease inhibitors and of course they're boosted and the reason they're, they can be boosted is because they're all substrates of 3A4. So they're not usually renally cleared. And uh, for non-nukes, so efavirenz uh, and rolpivirin are the two common ones that you use. Um, Etravirin actually, uh, for for food, you should take it after after each meal. Food can actually increase etravirin by fifty percent, so it's recommended to take it after meals. It doesn't necessarily mean empty stomach, but it just says uh, take it after meals rather than with food. Now these are all CYP3A4 substrates. Uh, one thing that's special about efavirenz is that it's actually an inducer of three, uh, CYP3A4. So you will also see a lot of drug in interactions with uh, efavirenz. So for protease inhibitors here uh, and uh, rolpivirin, here are some uh, sig uh, clinically significant drug interactions. So again, because uh, protease inhibitors are boosted, uh, you should avoid uh, substrates of CYP3A4. So here are the three statins that uh, are substrates of uh, CYP3A4. Atorvastatin also has a separate mechanism of clearance, so it's not as strong. So it's on listed here for uh, because it's in the package insert for uh, etazanavir, uh, boosted etazanavir, but it's okay to use atorvastatin with uh, darunavir. There are also uh, uh, hepatitis C protease inhibitors that are also substrates of uh, CYP3A4, so they should be avoided because these are boosted and the boosting will affect the levels of hep C drugs. And the same can be said about uh, salmeterol. Now, etazanavir and rilpivirin both need an acidic environment for absorption. So with etazanavir and with rilpivirin, it's uh, 
uh, you should actually avoid uh, proton pump inhibitors because it, they need the acidic environment. Let's take a look at some common drug interactions. When it comes to drug interactions, you will see that the majority of significant drug interactions are with boosted regimens, so either boosted protease inhibitors, so etazanavir, darunavir, and lopinavir are boosted with ritanavir or with cobicistat. And of course, LYtegravir is the only integrase strand transfer inhibitor that's boosted with cobicistat. And because these pharmacokinetic boosters uh, or SIP enzyme inhibitors, uh, they lead to significant um, drug interactions. Now, when it comes to uh, corticosteroids, you will see that uh, beclometazone, which is available as both the nasal formulation as well as inhalation, uh, is uh, pretty much safe to take with any regimen. Now, uh, for the sake of this discussion, we're going to ignore any topical formulations. Budesonide is available, uh, is available as inhaled and intranasal formulation, uh, but it is also available as uh, systemic formulation, so it can be taken orally. And you will see that it's contraindicated with uh, any pharmacokinetic booster. So it's not, um, you know, it should be avoided with the boosted PIs as well as Elvitegravir. Now, it does interact with efavirenz because efavirenz is an inducer. Uh, but it's not really contraindicated. So you just have to monitor and make adjustments to the dose of budesonide. Now, systemic dexamethasone itself is an um, inducer, so it can actually reduce the um, concentration of protease inhibitors and elvitegravir. So, um, you know, it should be monitored and uh, those, those adjustments must be made. But this, the interaction is significant with, uh, with relpivirin, so it actually should be avoided with uh, relpivirin. Now, fluticasone is available as inhaled and intranasal, and uh, both the routes are actually contraindicated with uh, boosted PI or boosted elvitegravir. Uh, Mometazone as well is available as in intranasal or inhaled formulation and uh, both routes are contraindicated with cobicistat and with uh, boosted uh, protease inhibitors. Uh, prednisone is systemic and um, it does interact but it's not contraindicated with um, boosted regimens and efavirenz. Uh, Salmetrol is inhaled uh, while it does interact it's not contraindicated so anything that's uh, yellow it potentially in interacts, but it's not contraindicated, whereas uh, the red boxes are contraindicated and should be avoided. Uh, and the green, of course, means uh, no, no significant interactions. Now, triamcinolone is also available as inhaled or intranasal. Uh, it does interact with uh, boosted regimens and efavirenz, but it's not recommended. Of note, triamcinolone, um, fluticasone and budesonide are also available over the counter as intranasal formulations. So as pharmacists, it is very important to provide education to patients who can easily walk, um, you know, to the shelves and grab any over the counter products. So if they are on uh, these boosted regimens, it's important to let them know that uh, you know, fluticasone and budesonide over the counter are contraindicated, and triamcinolone would be the safer option uh, should they need uh, intranasal um, corticosteroids for seasonal allergies, for example. Um, so, that's an important education to provide to patients. Now, when it comes to some of the cardiovascular agents uh, of note, amlodipine and uh, deltaizam are two commonly used uh, calcium channel blockers. Uh, because um, they are also substrates of SIP enzymes, they do interact with boosted regimens as well as uh, efavirenz. However, they are not contraindicated, so you just have to monitor the patient's uh, blood pressure and um, heart rate with uh, deltaizam and make adjustments to the dose of amlodipine and deltaizam based on their blood pressure and heart rate. Okay, so we are here at the local Walmart. We're gonna go check out the pharmacy.
you know where the pharmacy is? Okay. Okay, so I'm looking for over-the-counter allergy relief. Okay, so they have Flonase and nasal cord. Oh, Cecilia, you're here. Um, I have an HIV patient who's taking boosted regimen. They want Flonase. What do you think? Flonase. No, that's a terrible idea. Flonase will interact with boosted regimen and non-nukes. Oh, what should I do then? Go this way. Nasal cord. Nasal cord? Yes. Oh, thank you. I'm here to help you. When it comes to hormonal contraceptive, <coughs> contraceptives, uh, CPTRA4 has a role, so uh, both efavirenz and uh, ritonavir can affect the levels of uh, progestins. So because of that, it is recommended to um, use additional contraceptive methods uh, when the patient is uh, actually taking uh, efavirenz or uh, boosted uh, regimens. So with these, uh, they're not really they're not really contraindications, but you know it's important to let the patient know that these can make uh, hormonal contraceptives uh, ineffective or less effective. So. Uh, they should use alternative uh, methods of uh, contraception. So primarily with boosted and efavirenz. So as I mentioned before with uh, statins, uh, basically the three statins that go through CYP3A4 are listed here, but atorvastatin in particular doesn't primarily depend on 3A4, so uh, you know, historically Atorvastatin was considered a drug interaction with anything that affected 3A4, but nowadays uh, we have data that uh, atorvastatin is not as much affected. So, uh, you know, the only exception is that uh, with uh, with uh, etazanavir, uh, atorvastatin is actually contraindicated. But with uh, 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 you know, with darunavir, for example, they just recommend the maximum dose. But it's okay to use atorvastatin with darunavir. So these two contraindicated with uh, anything that has cobicistat or ret uh, retonavir, so any anything that's boosted.